Hey there, everybody. A uh, few of you had asked for some sort of tutorial on the weather windows that we picked to go around Cape Hatteras. And uh, this is going to go for a lot of passage making. Just knowing which way the winds are going to blow around different weather systems will give you a big leg up. These are shots from our southbound landing of Cape Hatteras last year. Sunny skies. Got a nice broad reach set up. Temperatures are cold as we left behind a cold front. And I'll tell you why that's important here in a second. For those of you who don't know, I am a meteorologist. I have a master's in atmospheric and oceanic science. And I was an operational forecaster for about 14, 15 years. That's right, for paying customers. I want to give a little disclaimer here. All weather situations are different, and if you don't have the confidence in your weather forecasting skills or analysis skills, it might be a good idea to hire a weather router. I can recommend Chris Parker. And even though it's a, a fee you have to pay, I'd say it's a good deal. Uh, before we get started, let's do a little basics on mid-latitude circulations. Uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, winds in general flow outward and clockwise around high pressure areas. There's many shapes and sizes of highs, so it's not like it's completely uniform. Around a low, the air is generally circulating towards the low and in a counterclockwise circulation because of the Coriolis effect. So clockwise around a high, counterclockwise around a low. Of course, they don't exist all by themselves. The mid-latitudes are dominated by highs and lows that basically go from west to east. They're moving from west to east. So the circulations are not independent. Uh, for the purposes of this little tutorial, we'll talk about uh, a low progressing across the middle of the United States, middle of North America. And in the fall, these mid-latitude cyclones, these low pressure areas, begin to pack a punch. So we have to be pretty careful about them as uh, we are trying to head south around the big capes. So we'll start off with this low that's somewhere over, let's say, Kansas, Nebraska, and Colorado, and moving across the plains of the US. We've got the counterclockwise circulation around the low, and just for, uh, I guess, a rough tutorial, we'll say that it's a closed circulation. Around the high pressure systems, we've got the clockwise circulation. And so you can see that they kind of work harmonically with the winds flowing around each high and low pressure area. So as we start things off and we look for a window to get around Cape Hatteras and move south, We've got maybe a departing ridge of high pressure across the mid-Atlantic states and that low moving across the plains. The speed of these, it varies, but uh, I'd say three to four days is a good uh, time period for an average cycle. Uh, again, the air is flowing outwards from a high and in towards the low. It's a three-dimensional process, so it's a little difficult to show on this two-dimensional surface. And I apologize for my bad graphics. But the important thing to note is in towards a low and outwards from a high. And then the weather systems themselves are moving from west to east. And it really varies. The speed varies. But typically a three to four, maybe even five day cycle between systems. All right, let's zoom in a little bit. And here is where I start planning my departure for a southbound rounding of Cape Hatteras. Got an area of low pressure, probably a frontal system, cold front, warm front. And we've got a departing ridge and a high pressure system behind that low. So out ahead of the low, the winds are from the southwest or southeast. And obviously, if we're southbound, that would be a bad time to head south around Cape Hatteras. But just look to our west. High pressure behind the low will give us a northwest wind. So we'll be looking to depart southbound sometime after the low goes by and the ridge builds in behind it. 
I'll zoom in more here in a second, but you can see the winds are blowing from land out to sea as that high pressure builds in. And look at this, as the high moves further out to sea, we get a north to northeast wind, which if we time it perfectly, will give us a downwinder or a reach after we get around Cape Hatteras. But it's important to know, this time of year, the pattern's very progressive, and there'll be another low following behind that ridge. We need to watch that carefully, because as we're heading down the coast, the winds inevitably will shift back towards the south to southwest. That would be in your face. We'll zoom in a little further. Again, the winds initially from the south, southeast, or southwest as that area of low pressure approaches. This is the time that we'd want to stage somewhere in the southern Chesapeake, hopefully a sheltered area, as some of these lows can be pretty strong. We'll get the cold front moving through with the low, and then usually some stronger west to northwest winds build in as the ridge moves in across the area. This is usually where the pressure gradient is tightest, so the winds are pretty strong at first. But as the ridge moves further and further to the east, the pressure gradient relaxes. So we've got the offshore wind, and it just depends on what your tolerances are for stronger winds. It determines when you want to leave to head south. But eventually, the ridge builds in over New England, and those winds continue to veer towards the north, and then eventually the northeast. And like I said before, if you time it perfect, you're going down the coast of North Carolina, you're around Cape Hatteras, and the winds bend around behind you. But, as always, keep an eye on the forecast as there's usually another low following behind the departing ridge. Figuring out exactly when to leave is uh, its a boat-to-boat -boat question. It depends on your boat speed, how long it's going to take you to get around Cape Hatteras, and how far you're trying to get with this weather window. It also depends on your tolerance for stronger winds, because as the ridge builds in, again, initially it's going to be pretty strong, and it could be pretty choppy, even close in. And you also have to consider the fact that there'll be another low pressure system coming your way, so you might have to hurry. I hope this little explanation was helpful. If you've got specific questions and you need some weather routing help, I really wish I had the time to help you out, but you may want to contact Chris Parker or one of the other very able weather routers out there, and that can help to give you some confidence if you've got some concerns about the weather. If I've seen one mistake over the last couple of years, it's uh, folks getting trapped in a, a pack mentality, uh, hearing that maybe another boat is headed off for the trip and then feeling like you got to follow in their wake. And that could be an issue because, again, it, it's very individual. The speed of your boat and the confidence of your crew make a lot of difference when you're, when you're trying to decide when to leave. So good luck. I hope you have a safe trip. And as always, hope to see you out there.